Over the past 60 years, the University of Denver and Pioneer Hockey have become synonymous with one another. From its humble beginnings, few people would have ever imagined the tradition of excellence we now enjoy today. During the past six decades, DU has produced seven NCAA championships, 20 NCAA appearances, 34 All-Americans, five Hobie Baker finalists, one Hobie Baker winner, and more than 1,200 victories. The DU hockey program might not even exist without the help of the United States government. In 1948, following World War II, the university, like the country, was in a growth mode. Athletic director Ellison Ketchum purchased a surplus naval drill hall in Idaho for the exact sum of $1. The government dismantled the structure and shipped it to Denver, where it was rebuilt as the new home of the DU basketball program. However, Mr. Ketchum, showing remarkable foresight, had the building equipped with a completely refrigerated concrete slab for a possible ice rink, and the program was born. Vern Turner was named the Pioneers' very first head coach. Turner, already the arena's rink manager, would add a long list of firsts to his resume during his two-year run with the program. Turner was behind the bench for DU's very first game, a 17-0 loss to Saskatchewan. He guided Denver to its very first win on January 27, 1950, an 8-7 decision over Wyoming. And 22 days later, Turner would watch the Pioneers collect their first ever home win, a 10-6 win over that same Wyoming squad. If you don't have a first year, you can't have a second. So uh, we felt comfortable that this was the first and uh, next year would be the second, and we look forward to that as well. In 1951, Neil Seeley would begin his five-year run as the man in charge of the Pioneers. Seeley, just 24 years old when he was hired, was an impressive 81, 43, and six during his tenure, including five straight winning seasons. Vern Turner and Neil Seely spent the first seven seasons building the program's foundation. In year eight, along came the architect that would put Denver on the national stage for the next two decades. The year was 1956. A former NHL player turned Canadian junior coach was given the task of taking the Pioneers to the top, and Murray Armstrong did not disappoint. When the Chief ended his 21-year run at Denver, he was considered the John Wooden, the Woody Hayes, the Bear Bryant of collegiate hockey. Coach Armstrong, upon accepting the position, promised a championship within three years, but Pioneer fans wouldn't have to wait that long. In just his second season behind the bench, Armstrong guided the Pioneers to the NCAA championship game and a resounding 6-2 win over the Fighting Sioux. We were lucky to win it, there's no question about it, but uh, everybody sort of came to their best and uh, I was pleasantly surprised that we won. That first title would mark the start of a decade of domination by the Pioneers. NCAA championships would follow in 1960, 61, 68, and again in 1969. Not only was DU the best team in college hockey during the 50s and 60s, they were among the very best amateur teams in the world. The Pioneers not only went toe to toe with the Russian national team in 1959, they knocked off another pretty good team, the Olympic champions of 1960. We played the Russians and we tied them. And uh, then, went, then we played them again, I guess it was the next year in 1960, we tied them again. There was another team that won the championship. They already beat the Russians. That was our United States team in 1960. And uh, we played them twice that year. We tied them and we beat them. So you can see the type of players that we, and team that we had at the University of Denver. When Coach Armstrong announced his retirement after the 1977 season, the Pioneer program had some very large shoes to fill, and it turned to one of its own. Marshall Johnston, who played for the Chief from 1959 to 1963 and was a member of Coach Armstrong's staff, 
was given the unenviable task of succeeding the legend. Completely uh, enjoyed my four years here as a player and uh, there were a lot of uh, people here, friends that I'd had, and then to, to have the opportunity to work with Murray, again, I was, I was very most fortunate. The start of the 80s brought about another coaching change. In 1981, Ralph Backstrom, a former DU assistant, would begin a nine-year run as the man in charge. The program began to build some momentum through the early 80s, and that patience would be rewarded in 1986. Coach Backstrom's squad won a school record 34 games, captured the WCHA's regular season and postseason titles, and secured a frozen four berth before falling in the semifinals. Coach Backstrom was also named the Spencer Penrose Award winner, signifying the nation's top collegiate coach. After winning 34 games in 85-86, the Pioneer Hockey program was unable to sustain that level of success. By 1990, the Pioneers were still competitive, but a far cry from their glory years. Enter Frank Serratori. When the new coach arrived on campus, he discovered he had two rebuilding jobs. One, rebuild the team, and two, recapture the Pioneers' tradition of greatness. But I was shocked when I came here and walked in the DU arena and saw how little of their tradition was displayed. And I said, you know, if we're going to recruit and rebuild this thing, um, you know, we've got to put all this tradition, we've got to display this tradition. So when we bring recruits in, you know, they're going to go, wow, I want to be a part of this. Coach Serratori set about trying to bring the DU hockey program into the 21st century. Facilities were upgraded, and the great pioneers of the past were brought back to life. Alumni began to return, a statue of Murray Armstrong was commissioned, and former All-Americans were given the recognition they richly deserved. Yes, Frank Serratori's hard work did indeed pay dividends, not for him, but for the new man in charge. On May 17, 1994, George Gwazdecki was named the seventh head coach in Pioneer history. The Pioneers returned to the NCAA tourney in 1997, 1999, and 2002. But in 2004, DU announced its official return to the top of the college hockey world with the most dramatic title game in NCAA history. In deep, here's a shot, it goes over the crossbar and out of the zone! Three seconds, two seconds, the Pioneers, the Denver Pioneers are gonna win their first national title since Neil Armstrong walked on the moon and are gonna be the kings of college hockey. Proving you can never have too much of a good thing, the Pioneers gave an encore performance in 2005, winning their second straight title and seventh overall. Well, you know, very few teams have been able to accomplish that. Very few student athletes have been able to achieve the ultimate of winning a national title in any sport. But when you do it, knowing do you appreciate the challenges and the struggle, um, but you also get a taste for it that you want again. It's almost addictive. In 2006, Denver didn't win the NCAA championship, but it was still another remarkable season. Two-time All-American Matt Carl was named the WCHA Defensive Player of the Year and the Player of the Year. And a month later, Carl became Denver's first player ever to win the Hobie Baker Award, signifying the college game's top player. It has been a remarkable 60 years for the University of Denver hockey program. There have been highs and lows, championships and disappointments, great teams and great players. But to a man, every pioneer will tell you the very same thing. In the end, it's not about the championships or the trophies, it's about the people.